Hey, how's it going, everybody out there? Welcome to Nightcap for April 5th, 2021. We're here. We're live. It's going to talk about some stuff tonight. I don't know. We'll get into it. I'll listen to these sick synth beats as we always do on Nightcap. Oh, yeah. Probably not loud enough for you to hear. I can hear it, though. That's what's important. So, yeah. Easter weekend accomplished. is done. It's over. Had a nice, relaxing Easter weekend, actually. Pretty good stuff. Good food. Uh, hung out with the fam. Watched a couple Easter mainstays. Watched the Ten Commandments in 4K, actually. The new 4K for the Ten Commandments is chef's kiss. It's a beautiful release. Uh, it's like a showstopper. It's one of your should be the things that you demo your your system with. You know what I mean? You know, people that get into home theater stuff, they like to demo their equipment, their tech. Well, well, that's one worth worth getting for that. Only twenty bucks too, which was good because just considering it just came out. Because I was on the fence, you know, I, I actually <laughs> rebought Ten Commandments last year because they had this big Blu-ray release, first time on Blu-ray last year, and it looked pretty good. Like it was, you know, I bet apparently like back in like 2010, Paramount did like a 6K restoration. It was it 2009? Maybe 2009. But they did a 6K re restoration of the original negative, so they had already had it kind of done, the material to work with. So I was just like. Dude, why the fuck didn't they just put this out last year? So I could have just bought this instead of bought, buying the Blu-ray and blah, blah, blah. Although, the Blu-ray when it came out, pretty cheap. And it also came with Cecil B. DeMille's original 1923 uh, version of the Ten Commandments, the silent film. Or 1923. Is it 23? Maybe 28. Something like that. Uh, his original go at it. And uh, so that's cool to have because that's not included in the 4K set. So now I have to own two different copies of it. And the reason I own it is because it is actually, on the low, one of my favorite movies. Ah, Prophet donated five lemons. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I am just a, a humble lemon enthusiast before you. Trying to make my way. But yeah, we're going to get into it tonight. I don't, you know... It being... Easter weekend, usually, you know, it leads you to kind of ponder, to think about things. You start thinking about your, my upbringing. You know, I was raised Catholic. Start considering the spiritual side of things, which is not something I do very often, honestly. In terms of like my own internal life, my own internal struggle, what do I, what do I, what am I looking for out of life? What do I think was valuable in my youth? Because I was raised pretty hardcore Catholic for a good chunk of my childhood, so. Easter is the kind of time of year I guess I'll go back and reflect on that. And it's probably because I watch religious movies during Easter. To me, it is very much explicitly a religious holiday. I know, you know, the Easter Bunny and all that, the secular stuff, but it seems like it's just mostly a religious holiday. So, so there you go. But anyways, we're going to check out, uh, we're going to check out some stuff tonight in kind of on that path. I started, I found, I found a video and then it kind of opened this doorway up into all this stuff about the Catholic church actually being like overtaken by Satanists, or maybe it always was like a satanic institution, the Vatican, the hub of Satan world. And this is something that is apparently like, if you were to check out like some of the, the Christian conspiracy theorist community, they're very much about that. They're all about that stuff. There's tons of stuff about that. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to hunt a lot of it down. I was trying to just a few hours before we did this and I had to put my kid to bed trying to find stuff. But I figured maybe it would be cool or a good idea. Let's let's find out what the modern Satanist has on their mind. What are they doing? What do they preach? What do they say? So we, I went for some mainstream sources. So we've checked out from this this channel a few videos from Truly. I got a lot of like, you know. I don't know what you'd call it, like a uh, slice of life for abnormal things, <laughs> for for 
for those kind of people? I don't know. Uh, Prophet says, Easter Bunny secular. Laugh a lot. Heard of pagans much, bro? Time to get off the blue pill of Christianity and take the Odin pill. Yeah, that's what they say. Because Christianity, I mean, every Christian holiday is there to meet a pagan holiday when they were back in the business of trying to proselytize and convert people. They had to circumvent a lot of the pagan holidays. Christmas is no different. You know, apparently, you know, Jesus, if really born in April, isn't that what they say? Not born on Christmas. They're all there to, like, meet the, the, the seasonal holidays that pagans enjoy. They were like, hey. I Because I remember specifically Christmas. They're like, you know, I know you guys usually do this winter solstice thing, but, you know, we also have something. So if that was... If that's, what, if that's what's keeping you out of the church, you know, we got something for you. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you guys have holidays too. That's a very streamlined, simplistic version of it, but it's kind of what happened, honestly. Uh, but yeah, let's see what these, uh, let's see what these satinists have to say. Might have to, do I have to adjust anything? I do not. We came prepared for once. I will vex the living soul. Am I evil? By the right hand path standards, I am quite evil. Having a dad that worships the devil is just like feeling like an outcast. <laughs> what if my kids want to be now? Uh, we've already had the conversation. That's not going to happen. Uh, of course, this guy looks. <laughs> There's this movie called The Dark Song. It came out a few years ago. It was on. It was on Netflix. And uh, it was about, like, this Satanist dude trying to, like, help this woman, woman go through some sort of weird thing. She's trying to conjure up, like, the soul of her dead family. And he looks exactly like the dude that's in that movie. <laughs> and... <laughs> do, you, do you wish people would be more accepting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jam. Devil worshiping. Being a Satanist in the Bible Belt can be restricting. It can be oppressive. Um, it's hard to keep work. It's hard to get work. Once people know, they, they treat you differently. I've lost contact with basically every member of my side of the family. Oklahoma City Devil Worship Church. The Church of Aramin, Araman is 15 years old. Angramanu, the god of hell. Dark stuff. So where do you want to start? Uh, we are in the ritual chamber where majority of our rituals occur here at the Dock of Angramanu. <laughs> it's like this is where we come and we jerk each other off and we cut each other's thumbs and then we just like spread blood everywhere. The cum, the blood, it's everywhere. It's happening. We use fog machines that helps lubricate the environment for uh, spiritual entities. And then the north wall, because north is the seat of evil, you find Shiva. Lord Shiva to us. Is this like standard? Is this like standard Satanist, modern Satanist belief? Like if you were to go to any other satanic worshiping situation or a church or whatever, would they be have the same kind of... I know they'd have some of the same iconography, but would Shiva be there? This guy's going international. Okay, he's very accepting. Rise up, thou father of us, for our cause and conflict in the world! And she has two lions on her side. Jesus. She's also the goddess of the beast of the field. And Immense's blood is what we use to corrupt everything because that is the uh, biggest beacon for demons. <laughs> demons, they love their Mensi's blood. I gotta tell you, you know, that's... <laughs> I know, they have all these bullshit esoteric things. It's just, it's just funny to hear them say it, honestly. I gotta drink some more. This is, this is going how it's going. A lot of people might think that handling menstrual blood would be gross. There's a lot of um, religious connotation against it, but it's a corrupting fluid. It's what attracts demons. It's what brings demons. Um, 
It is said in Zoroastrianism to have sex with a menstruating woman as a straight guide to hell. It's actually worse than committing blasphemy. Um, this is the mens menses pot, as we call it. It's actually a clay pot, um, as you can see. We don't cover it, so it gets dried out and caked pretty fast. So we got to fill it up usually twice a month. Uh, well, she donates the, the mens menses blood. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, darling? <laughs> Holy shit. That lady's got a, dry, a forehead like a drive-in movie theater. She looks, you know, honestly, like, she looks like she would be a Satanist. That other guy just seems lonely. She looks like she would totally be a Satanist. 100%. <laughs> um, and other female... We'll donate the menses blood, and then we mix it with costume blood because you know they're obviously not producing enough to fill up the pot. It's just not. I mean, they're just not doing their part. Then you know, maybe you got to get some more chicks, got to get some more menstruators, people that menstruate. I wonder how Satanists feel about everything that's going on right now. They must. Do they love it? Do they love the deconstructionist stuff with like sex and gender? Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's more of like a traditionalist. Maybe he's like, no, I'm not cool with all of this stuff. Like, listen, I'm old school Satanist, okay? I'm not part of this nouveau riche, this fucking accepting everything that just happens or whatever. That's not for me, buddy. Okay, that's not for me. I like my Satanism old-fashioned. I like real menses blood from real women. Not humanly possible, except for maybe over a year or two's time. Kelsey and Adam have been married 14 years. My role in the church is in Mobed. Um, I oh, okay. So that's his wife. That's how he gets that Menzies blood. See, we could have used this information a second ago. But Jesus Christ, you know, I'm not one to talk. I don't like I don't like talking shit about the way people look. Got my own problems, but that's like, she looks like a goblin creature. You know, she looks like something. You ever see the movie The Passion of the Christ? <laughs> and like Satan's like, I don't know. Holding that demon baby thing at one point. I think it's like when when he's about to betray Christ. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Like, I buy it. I buy that this woman is a true believer, 100%. I was, uh, I'm one of the higher up priests. Also on paperwork, I'm the, the treasurer um, of it uh, and the secretary. Do you care if you're offending anyone? No, I don't. The infamous Asme. <laughs> In fact, you could say that's probably like 90% of the impetus for doing this. That's what I'd say. The uh, ritual dagger, as they call it, um, it is not a killing device. It is not a let's sacrifice the virgin kind of thing or something like that at all. It's actually, um, for left-hand path magic, it's actually replaced as they want. What's, uh, what's all the bread stuff on it? Again, it's menstrual blood. Part of the Yasna ritual, which is our weekly... Uh, it's like these walls. You see these walls? The menstrual blood. See this over here? Menstrual blood. See this painting of Shiva? Menstrual blood. It's the menses. It's very powerful. Everything gets covered in the corrupting fluid. They have three children and a dog. He's usually, he likes to bark. Wow. Come on, Doogie. <laughs> Why is that dog all moist? It's the menstrual blood. Is it ironic that, that we have a dog that we love and care for? No, because in devil worship, we understand that the human being can only love so much. We can't love every other person on the planet, nor should we. We should be able to hate freely as well. But those who are in our family, those who are the enclosed network of the church, we love them. We share that. We watch over them. They watch over us. So your children are very important to you? Yes, sir. Very much so. We hide um, the religion from their schools. We hide a lot of things um, so that they can have as normal of a life as possible. Um, well, two of my kids, they, they, they couldn't understand the precepts or the concepts anyway. Um, my middle child, um, it's up to her. It's up to her to believe what she wants. <sighs> um, she knows the literature. She knows what, she, she knows what we do, and it's her decision on what she's going to do. Yeah, Amber, explain why... You haven't um, you haven't decided on what type of religion that you're going to practice if you're going to practice one at all. I don't 
No, I don't know if it's actually real or not. That's all. You don't know what's real. So, did you not see the ceremony last winter solstice, honey? I levitated. I levitated right off the goddamn ground. Find stuff. The spirits are real or not? I'm the daughter of Adam Daniels. Would you be interested in following in, like, you know, your father's footsteps? And... Uh, um, not really. I'm just wanting to go my own way. I don't want to take on after the church because it's just. I don't know if I would be actually able to handle it or not, and that's just not what I want in my life. Well, a lot of people don't understand about me. They don't understand about me. Like, this is the thing about Satanists that always, like, kind of cracks me up. It's always, I find it so... They're just, like, edgelords. I mean, they, this, they have a fucking Diablo 3 poster on their wall. Not even framed, by the way. Also, the green walls, is that, and maybe that's a Satanist thing, maybe that's a production thing, maybe they make videos, you know? Maybe they're doing, like, uh, Star Wars fan films in there. But you always find stuff like this, it's always just, like, the edgy t-shirts and the fucking, the tats, and, like, you know, if, if you didn't know any better, you're just like, oh, maybe that guy really likes Iron Maiden, or something, or Demi Borgir, or whatever. Blind Guardian, maybe he's a big Blind Guardian fan. <laughs> he loves the products of, of Blizzard Entertainment. I mean, come on, dude. I don't know. It's like you don't find that in other... You don't find, like, Catholics or Christians or whatever with, like, fucking game posters for their... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe you do. Maybe if you went to, like, an ultra-Christian person's house, maybe they'd have, like, a, a Pure Flix or Clear Flix movie posters on their walls. Be like, oh, this Kirk Camera guy, he's great. He's great. You ever see that fucking movie? Left Behind? You ever see that? No, not the Hollywood bullshit. Not that one. With Nicolas Cage. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Kirk Cameron classic. My personality because nobody takes the time to. Is the more you tell me no, or the more you tell me I should do something else, the harder I'm going to fight you. The worse it's going to get. The more I'm going to stand out. The more the fire is going to be lit inside of me. What if my kids wanted me to stop? Um, like, I like I wish they would, like, because this is all very just, like, superficial stuff, right? Like, like what are your principles? What is the ethos of this group? What, what do you guys actually believe? What are you hoping to achieve? What are you doing? Like, these, it's like, just, it's just pablum. Well, we've already had that conversation. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Having a dad that worships the devil is just like feeling like an outcast and like it's like nobody wants to be around you because they're just like they like hate you or like scared of you or something and it's kind of hard to keep friends sometimes. I have. I feel really bad for this girl. You know, you're you're kind of trapped in here. I guess it, it's could it like a. a kid that grows up in a christian household or a catholic household maybe you're ultra um, traditional catholic or something like that there's a lot of the same similar stuff you know i grew up a little for kind of a brief time in my life enough enough years to remember that i lived in a very weird catholic religious community and, and i went to catholic schools and all that kind of stuff and there is kind of an ostracization from your peer group Especially when you're younger, because people just don't like kind of understand or and you don't understand how to communicate with like kind of people outside of your of this little bubble that you're in. And you have somebody like this, though. I mean, this is obviously a little extra beyond that, because even even though I got a lot of shit when I was a kid, it was just like people yelling at you and shit while you're walking to school. Um, the stigma of like being like, oh, yeah, my family, they're Satanists. <laughs> It's probably pretty intense. It's probably not a great experience. But I feel for her. I feel for her. And she's clearly not uh, having any type of revelation in her life about this practice. So, it's a bummer for her. 
I have ritualistically burned the Holy Bible, the Quran, the Talmud, uh, the Torah, uh, Buddhist sutras, uh, different Hindu sutras, you name it, I've been, yeah, burned it. I mean, see, that's just like fucking edgelord shit. That's edgelord shit. There's probably a fucking dozen teenagers that have done the same thing. There are hundreds of thousands of teenagers done the same thing throughout their entire life, you know? I burned it out of the blast when I got No, I don't care if people are upset by it. The whole issue with, with right-hand path religions, like Christianity, Buddhism, is mind control. I'm going to control your mind, and I'm going to control your habits, and you're going to do these things the way I say you're going to do them, because some holy God decided that I was a I was the guy, which was really he was the guy who decided this shit. He was the guy who wanted the power over people. He was the guy who wanted to enslave people to do whatever the hell he wanted them to do. And as far as I'm concerned, that type of mindset can go f*** themselves. And that right there, in a nutshell, is actually the kind of foundational principle of Satanism. It may be weird that I know, I actually know a lot about this stuff. I was, you know, I was, like I said, I was raised Catholic, but used, I used to, in my free time, uh, I grew up in a sleepy little Massachusetts town, and we had a local library, and they had tons of books on, like, witchcraft and Satanism, and they would be, like, written by people that were practicing. So I actually, like, learned a lot about what actual like Satanism actually is in a kind of more modern context. Uh, I went from the more extreme people to like, you know, that were into like thinking that they actually, there was like black magic and white magic and they had powers and they could do, they could do ceremonies and they could uh, impose their will on other people through rituals to kind of more milquetoast stuff where they're just like, uh, you know, they're just like free speech edge lords. And actually there was a documentary, I think it's on Hulu. Uh, it was called Hail Satan, and it was about like kind of the free speech aspect, religious freedom aspect of modern Satanists, and like it would those people you can make on principle that argument, but unfortunately, like it's just full of like trolls and very online type people, um, and the hipsters, and you kind of just kind of like lose like a sense of giving a fuck if they achieve their goals or not. Cause you're like, you guys kind of are doing this ironically. It's like Shrek fest, <laughs> but just on a larger scale, I guess. They feel the need to come over here and come on my property. They're going to be met with much more aggression than they could ever come up with. Somebody wants to come in here. And yeah. He's going to conjure a fucking demon. He's going to throw these menses blood at you. This man isn't fucking around. Uh oh, Bad connection, it says. Hopefully not. Well, hopefully it'll be okay. And uh, if the if the connection keeps going in and out, I am locally recording this to put it up on YouTube later. So you go check out our YouTube. Go check out our About page. Go check out our YouTube. It, it will be there later tonight. Threaten me, threaten my family, threaten my property, they will die. I will meet them with more aggression than they could ever imagine. Just because I look like a fat, sloppy guy doesn't mean I can't fight. <laughs> you know, you feel unhappy with the situation. It depends how it is. Just maybe some way to feel normal or accepted in some way, I guess. Do you, do you wish people would be more accepting? Yeah. Oh, what could it be? What could it be? Come on, guy. Put, at least put a shirt on that doesn't have a giant rip in the armpit. You're going to be on YouTube, buddy. Basically, uh, I worked at this uh, Conoco station at 23rd in Portland. A guy had just rolled in. Uh, he came in and stabbed one of our regulars in the gut. He went to stab me, and I had to end up defending myself. And the guy busted his head open like a pumpkin all over the floor. It was a life-changing event for me because, first off, you know you don't you're not expecting to have to kill somebody ever. I mean, you know, but I did it anyway. And I tried to find solace, and there was no solace to be found. In fact, I was told that I was committing the sin of wrath by defending myself by not only the Christians, the Catholics, but the Buddhists. And Who the fuck was saying that to him? If somebody comes into a place, there's no Christian 
I don't know, maybe Buddhists, but I don't even think Buddhists are that extreme. They're not just like, yeah, just let them kill you. Like, that's not at all. Like, who the fuck is he talking to? And as somebody that grew up, like, around these people, uh, nobody would ever say defending yourself is, like, uh, against the rules. It would be a pretty major exception to them. Several other folks in the religious community, hell, even my mom. This is the joint. <laughs> what could I have done differently so the guy did Go and get me a hot dog. This is the one place they will let us buy groceries in this town because of our beliefs. Or we're oppressed. Going here to get my family some hot dogs off the roller. Didn't die. What could have happened differently so he could have survived or whatever needed to happen instead of me having to carry that with me for the rest of my life? That's the kind of questioning I think. I wouldn't say I'm glad that I found devil worshiping. Devil worshiping became the tool to allow me to deal with my inner demons and to get through anything that the world could throw at me. It gave me the strength I needed. It gave me the hardness I needed to, to live in the world of, that it is. Where do you think you'd be if, if it hadn't happened? I, you know, I'd probably still be doing the Buddhist thing. The martial arts and the Buddhist thing. I, I don't think um, I don't think my my line of thinking would have changed. I don't think there would have been a snap right there. You don't like looking at it. I don't want to look at it. No, sorry. Well, so how does that go from there to Satanism? Like he talked to a few people that said, like, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe what you did was wrong. He was like, fuck you. Fuck all this. Oh, is he like a Bruce Lee type guy? You know, he mentioned that he was into martial arts. Maybe these are classified as deadly weapons. These hands. I'll put hands on you, boy. Come at me. Crack you open like a goddamn pumpkin on a pavement. Maybe there's more to the story. Maybe they're like, Jesus, Jerry, you sick fuck. Guy was just coming in to buy a hot dog. He had a hot dog in his hand. He wasn't trying to kill anybody. You thought Tommy got stabbed. That was just a little catch up from the hot dog. They bumped into each other. Jesus Christ, buddy. How do you accept the fact that everybody says you're a murderer when you just defended yourself? That's what it all boils down to. Like, I really, seriously, so I, I need some more context here. Like, people call, what was going on? Did you go, did, was there a trial? Why would people just call you a murderer if somebody had a fucking knife coming at you? I'm, I don't know if I buy this story completely. I mean, when he, in 1999, he's like, yeah, I'm a Buddhist. I was like, okay, red flags already. You're definitely a lost person. You're looking for something. And you got to live that edgelord lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, Buddhists can be edgelords. Yeah. Uh, every time I get stream cucked by my cabin DSL, it's like Kurt Russell movie and I'm Steven Seagal and Sean is like, we're not going to make it. And I'm like, you will. <laughs> Good old executive decision. Sorry, I can Oh, see, he does have a... I name-dropped Demi Borger earlier, and he has a Demi Borger shirt on. I don't think Demi Borger are actually devil worshippers, though. They do death metal, for sure. Germans. And this guy's just like... That's like... Just everything about them. That is all, it's just all these pop culture shit that's like has like tertiarily, tangentially involved with Satanism. They just surround themselves with it. 
It just makes it seem just like teenage edgelord shit. I can never take these people seriously, ever. DSS. Nah, just kidding. It's me, Malachi. Adam and his congregation are heading out to engage with the local community. Proselytizing you should go well. This man? Jesus! He died for your sin. Jesus! I'm gonna need some documented proof of this other than a book <laughs> that you guys have been reading for the past couple of hours. This is literally what 15 year olds talk like. This is what you do when you're 15 years old and everybody's, you know, everybody's a good grown up Christian, Catholic, whatever. And you fucking goof on things and you think, oh, you're being really fucking edgy and you're smart and you're just like, it's a fucking stupid book, dude. <laughs> you fucking see that shit, dude? You see that stupid book? Oh, you see that shit what these people believe, dude? That's fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, having some cringe flashbacks of my own goddamn life. They go up to the statue. You don't look so tough, pussy. All dressed in white, huh? I don't think I've ever actually seen the statue. The Oklahoma City bombing that occurred in 1995. What we have over on this side is the... Yeah. Like, why would any... like it's, <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's just so dumb. And this is why nobody takes this shit seriously. I'm sorry there, whatever your name is, Jericho. Ginger Man. This is why people don't like you guys. This could be part of it. Memorial itself. Over from the memorial or in the museum, the uh, the post office took a hit. This old cathedral took a, a very hard hit. And this is the restoration of the old cathedral. And then the Catholic Church has decided that they would just put a big old statue of Jesus to bring about solace to all the death and destruction that happened across the street. And I, since when did they care about killing people? I mean, they've been killing pagans and witches and Jews for thousands of years. Why would they care about a couple hundred people across the street? But it's whatever. With our symbol right here, and then with Jahi on the back, and then you have this one. They really like this one, the Christians that were walking up there. They were staying a long time at it. I guess they've never seen a naked ass before. Sure, you dress like a priest. What is this? A naked ass? Oh my god. You mean the pr the provocative pamphlets are provocative? What a joke. These people are no different than uh, any other like Scientology or whatever. It's like on that level. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing something funny. I'm a funny guy. I'm funny. She's like, don't look at it, Barb. Don't fucking look at it, Barb. Oh, that's a naked ass. You guys got any ones with dicks? With cocks? I think some people might find it disrespectful that, that you're here. Them. I don't care if they find it disrespectful. They can f themselves. I have every right to f***ing be here as everybody else. I'm a citizen of this country. And I have the f***ing free will to say whatever the hell I want due to the Constitution. And if I want to come up and mock this f***ing <laughs> idiocracy that they call Jesus, I am I'm going to go find our guys and then head out to more. We'll catch up with you guys. I thought he had a walkie-talkie in his hand. Those was just his keys, but I was like, oh, this is like a serious operation. Malachi, Malachi, you got Damien with you? Okay, we're heading out to the fucking McDonald's now. Yeah, we're getting hungry over here. Out. Going and tracking somebody down? <laughs> yeah, he ran pretty quickly. I saw that. Where'd he go? He went that way. I'm very disgusted. <laughs> he ought to be beat. It, it just didn't need to be here. He, he, can, he has a right to do what he wants to do, but it doesn't need to be here. And it certainly didn't need to See, like, that's the whole thing. Like, it's just like... <laughs> they're like this is like those are and that's actual christian people like for the vast majority of the time they're just like oh yeah you can do whatever the fuck you want to do but don't come to our place of worship and fucking put your dumb awful looking pamphlets and also it's across the street from where the oklahoma sitting bombing was 
And uh, there's a memorial right there. So maybe, I don't know, taste, you know, it's a thing. Tact, it's a thing. To be across from the memorial. Each, each one of the missing cubes that he's putting those in represents one of the people that were that was lost or a victim that was over there. So you're defacing that. Yeah, but dude, don't you know the church that killed people fucking hundreds of years ago? You remember that when that happened? So why do you give a fuck, dude? You fucking part of the fucking problem, brother. American. I say American. That's what I say to you. And then he also defaced the Christ with his back crying, so... That's not okay. Yeah, it's almost like it might mean a little bit more to people in that neighborhood than just the fact that it's religious. Like, because even if you're a secular person, like, you can look at that and be like, oh, I respect, like, the message here. I respect what this symbolizes, what it stands for, I suppose. That's another one of these nights. We got to get into that. We got to get into the Oklahoma City stuff. I really, if you, I really want to get a ban from YouTube. Start getting into that. Start reading that manifesto. That would be fun. <laughs> the fire rises. Oh, I hope he's got it covered in Menci's blood. That's, I was just thinking how, you know, we're uh, we're just normal people, you know, we put our <laughs> shoes on one at a one at a time. What's wrong, guy? You don't like all that menses blood on your face? Blasphemous. Like everybody else, you know. I don't. There's no need to be so scared, you know, we're not gonna eat you. Yeah, we're just coming up, we'll just, you know, go to, you know, your 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 places of worship and we'll harass you and we'll hand out things and look all sketchy and weird. Look at me, I'm fucking just a guy who enjoys the smoke and a two liter of Mountain Dew. You know, I ain't gonna do nothing crazy. How much you wanna bet that thing is half ever clear? <laughs> Seems like the type. That's... <laughs> I mean, some people might be freaked out by the menstrual blood on your head. That's well, yeah, some people, some people might, you know. That's to, you know, to no, each their own. But that's, see, that's the one thing we're ooh, trying. Doesn't to really come off. <laughs> oh, just a bunch of like-minded weirdos. Are they all drinking Mountain Dew? Is this like part of the ceremony? This demon only responds to you if you're full of the dew. I'd say we're as normal as everybody. <laughs> no. That's Anton LaVey, the founder of Satanism. That should be self evident. That's the bathroom that everybody sees. He doesn't even have a Lester Crowley. You're going to have Anton LaVey, who was basically self admitted con man, bullshit artist, almost like a piece of performance art. I understand he had his, you know, he had his, his worldview, his perspective, but like. That's some normie. That's normie tier, buddy. Ginger man, that's normie tier. It's like, what are you doing? Anton LaVey. Fuck. You would expect at least this guy would be like down with Crowley or something, but Jesus. This is not a swastika. It is called a wolf cross. So you there? Evil. Yes, I am pure evil and a standard set by the Christians and the Muslims and everybody else because... I believe in freedom of speech, I believe in freedom of thought, I believe in the freedom of action. In other words, it is me who controls what I do, what I say, what I do. It's like, it's like the fucking guys when we were watching, like, the pedophiles, and they would show up to, like, gay rights marches, and, like, include themselves, but, like, no, dude, like, listen, I stand for all of these things that you like and you enjoy, and, like, I want to be part of your movement. It's like they're, like, some kind of acceptance grift that they're kind of building towards. And this has been happening, I've noticed... In the past few years, in the same way that pedophilia has kind of come back in vogue with people trying to, like, create an acceptance movement, I see the same thing with Satanism. And I think that's the next video we're going to hit up should kind of touch on that a little bit.
think, and I will allow myself to think whatever I want, say whatever I want, and do whatever I want. I am responsible for me. I am not responsible for God, and no God is responsible for me. And through my words and my deeds, I am offending God, and that is my whole goal. Is to I mean, like, everything he just said, like, you know, no God is responsible for me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not that, like, different in the sense... Like most Christians don't believe that God is the one that doesn't control you. Like you're supposed, it's supposed to augment your behavior because they're guideposts. It's like, you know, values and, you know, a moral structure. But it's not like that's the whole thing. It's that you have the power of like your will to choose what you do and what you don't do. Like it's not, it's not a fucking, you know, it's just not, that's, that's not even what most Christians believe. So this guy obviously just a fucking weird guy, I guess. He just doesn't, he's just always perpetually lost person. Um, Prophet says, yes, I worship Satan, the Antichrist. No, 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 that's not a Nazi flag. They were evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to offend God to the point, to make his people miserable, to bring about a prostate, to bring about... Well, then he should love Hitler. Like, based on what he's saying, like, Hitler would have been his guy. This guy has no integrity. ...about anguish, so that they lose their power. Who can say? Well, that was former porn star to preacher. God damn it. All right, let's take a brief sojourn. I got to see this former porn star, porn star to preacher, which is probably going to show you how deluded <laughs> this industry, the Christian industry is these days. But uh, yeah, but that guy was just a moron. That guy was just an idiot. He clearly had like some emotional problems. And they didn't get into it at all with them. Like, if you have this opportunity, you're going to talk to this dude. I mean, come on. Like, fucking probe a little harder. But let's see what this porn star preacher... I tried to quit the porn industry without the help of God. And the reality is I couldn't do it because God and porn don't mix. Because dicks rock hard. You have to Brittany send truly and her a check. Richard are both pastors at Cornerstone Church in San Diego. If it's your first time here, could you please raise your hand? We just want to welcome you and love on you. Here at our church, we love to give back. <laughs> Less than six. A prophet says, no, Hitler was, ra Hitler was racist, Sean. That's not part of Satanism. Didn't you hear Joyce Nosbaum's lecture on God and why he created porn? Unfortunately not. Is this, I, maybe I should look this up. Years ago, Brittany went by the stage name Jenna and worked as a successful porn star. I used to be named one of the world's hottest porn stars. I'm going to make you chamomile. <laughs> That's what you want, right? Yep. Okay. I made probably upwards of 275 to 375 movies. I don't know, uh, hundreds of movies. After we get a chance of um, just blessing the people in Indonesia, we're going to go to Bali. So, I'm like, looking yeah. forward to oh, the dude, monkeys. This yeah. guy like won the lottery, dude. Like He was like, oh, I get to marry the reformed porn star. <laughs> that's That's... That's that guy is loving it. He's loving it. He's like, yeah, dude, you know, whatever goes on in the bedroom, that's between us, me, you and God, you know, and God's not going to judge how we express our, our love for each other. You know, <laughs> guess like a pig and shit. It's like, Hey, no, it's cool. Like, yeah, I know, you know, your past thoughts oh, awful. Like, let, let me help you. Yeah. I was making about $30,000 a month. I had a, a brand new Mercedes and every new Louis Vuitton purse and Christian Louboutin heels. Like, I, I really played the part. Brittany might have looked the part, but underneath the designer labels, she was hiding a dark secret. I was <laughs> earning a lot of money and I was struggling to pay my rent because I had a really, really bad drug addiction. I would spend thousands and thousands of dollars on... No! Drug addiction and porn? I don't buy it. Drugs a week because I started off with cocaine, but then eventually I was battling um, with the heroin addiction. I could tell that I was like, I just was like super high. My eyes look all glossy. So I was also battling with severe suicidal thoughts. It took Brittany more than one attempt to leave porn, but in the end, it was religion that gave her the final push she needed. <laughs> 
starting. It was Reverend Todd's giant dick. <laughs> going to church and I went to go film a porn scene in Las Vegas and I brought my Bible and on the airplane I open up Revelation 2.20 and it says I have this thing against you. You tolerate that woman named Jezebel and she leads my people into sexual immorality. I've given her time to repent and if she doesn't repent I will cast her children and her into a sick bed. And I was just like She's like, God damn, Jesus, why you gotta blow me off like that in front of everybody? I was like, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I ended up going to set that day and I quit the porn industry. I filmed my very last scene that day and then I was just done. Well, you know, I, she, she's a woman of integrity. She's like, no, I, I signed a contract. I'm gonna get this done today. So I took There they are. They're wistfully looking back at her old videos. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, this is this is really evil." Do you think do you think this dude Do you think he ever watched his wife's porn? Like after the fact, after he met her, do you think he looked her up? <sighs> mm, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> <laughs> well, the shadow knows, but we're not the shadow. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that he did. Maybe not Maybe not after they were married, but definitely during the courtship or meeting her initially. It had to be something like that. He had to have. I don't know. I mean, not to say that it, maybe he would want to. I'm not trying to dunk on Todd. I'm sure he's very nice. But I don't know. Yeah, you know, like myself, I'm not going to go court and marry an ex porn star. Or maybe I would. Maybe she's a very nice person. I don't know. You know I'm being very judgmental. Not being very Christian. You know? Here off of dating and. <laughs> a prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> Prophet says, imagine mopping up this woman and bringing her into your life. She used to fuck ex-cons named Demarcus Ice on film, and now you lick the plate. That's what I get. Yeah, this is kind of, that's the vibe I get. That's the, that's the vibe I get here. Um, over that year, I really started to fall in love with the preacher. Oh, preach it, baby. Love Come you. on, give me five. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> her past there was never a time where I wanted to call off the relationship you know I believe when you love somebody you should love everything about them oh I bet you do buddy he only watches her interracial scenes of course I mean he's a cuck obviously and he's like getting that virtual cuckery it's going on <laughs> this poor fucker uh uh Brittany has since been trying to help other women in the porn industry who might also be struggling like she did. Okay. So right now we are at my friend Raven's apartment. She's still in the porn industry. She's just been going through some things that I've gone through, and so I just want to be a friend. To like prolapsed anuses, you know, blown out vaginas. For her and just help her out in any way that I can. Hey! Get your Thank gift. You, You're welcome. Brittany definitely has an influence on me because she's always been there for me. Anytime I need something or need to talk about something, she will pray with me. Um, that helps me a lot. <laughs> yeah. I feel it was in the background. Was that like her AVGN award? Her, her AVGN. That's the angry video game nerd. Her adult video award. Is that what that is? That'd be kind of funny if it was. It helps me a lot. <laughs> yeah. My door. Oh, so this is my room. It's Hi. a little messy. Honestly, I'm very spiritual. I'm a very spiritual person. So, like, I love crystals and stuff like that. You have to send me the link for those because I, I really will. want to buy one of those. I will. Super oh, cute. I have a lot of fans, too, that know that I, I am Christian and yeah. know that I do go to church. Yeah. Oh, no, I have a video of Josephine from Tombstone. We'll, do, we'll Maybe we'll hit that up next. But, yes, it's kind of it's like that. I'm into crystals and, like, very spiritual. 
I love to travel. You know, that's what I want to do someday. I just want to save up some money and fucking go there, you know? And then I have the people that are just like, well, you're in porn. Like, they think that if you're in porn, like, you can't go to church. But mm -hmm. it's like, well, where are you supposed to start? I absolutely hate when religious people demonize porn stars. That is not okay. When I was in the not porn cool, industry, guys. I actually used to get people that would have signs up that would say, you are going to hell. And to be honest, that does not work. When I go to the porn conventions, we set up a huge booth that says, Jesus loves porn stars. I get really good reactions. I'm beyond proud of my wife's transformation because here was a woman who was once lost and now she's found. I'm now a real estate agent now, and so I make just as much as I did in the porn industry in a month uh, in real estate, and I don't have to take my clothes off. So, I mean, I think I'm much happier now. <laughs> I say that I live life with no regrets. If I had never gotten into the porn industry, I wouldn't get to do all of the incredible things that I'm doing now. My favorite thing about being a fallen person is being able to like constantly talk about my previous life. <laughs> about, you know, it's like when drug addicts, you know, when people get sober and stuff and they're just like, oh yeah, dude, you used to fucking crank it all the time, crazy party guy, but not now. No, not anymore. So they get that little juice of like reliving it. I imagine there might be a little aspect of this in what she's doing. I'm very curious what this situation is though with this uh, preacher guy. This is really what I want to know about because I'm just like a, a filthy, cretinous fucking gossip whore. All right, well, speaking of Josephine from Tombstone, anybody, if you don't know the film Tombstone, there's a character. There's a character called Josephine, a character and a real life person that ends up kind of marrying Wyatt Earp. She steals him away. She steals this guy away. I found the modern Josephine. Now you may have seen this in the past, but we'll check out a little. We'll check out a little, little bit, little taste, just in case you folks haven't. It's recording. Perfect. Oh, life is so crazy. I met you a month ago at Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Now we're living together. This is real. That's this is not a works. sketch. Everything is supposed to be easy. This You're woman has an entire it. YouTube channel <laughs> buying rose. full of videos oh. like this. <laughs> we both sell region. Shout out Whole Foods. Always loved that place. Always loved Whole Foods from the time I was like a kid. It always gave me such a warm feeling inside. Food. I knew that I would meet my soulmate at Whole Foods. Food brings people together. I love you. Really? Mm -hmm. This is exactly mm -hmm. what happened to Josephine and Wyatt Earp. I know that it's true. This is basically their story. Because warm, warm golden light fills my chest when you say that. That's never happened with anyone before. Things are going good for us. Who do you think pays for this apartment? And it's not them. And look at this. And then they're just painting on it. She's like, meets this dude. Yeah, I'm a videographer. You know, I, I videotape like everything I do. You cool with that, right? Okay. You're teaching me how to be myself, Ricky. I love who you are. I fucking, I've met, oh my God, in a, in a previous life, in another life, I've met so many girls like this so many of these uh i don't even know what i call them like rich just rich girls with nothing better to do than shit like this just constantly and they don't understand like how you don't get it oh your life's not like mine you don't just like kind of exist they really don't they have no and they have no empathy like this is all artificial now, I'm not speaking about this person in particular, but a lot of people that have the same affectation, 
is complete bullshit. They're the most of the time the most awful, most judgmental, uh, most closed-minded people you will ever fucking meet. Holy shit! I used to live with some when I was in Boston. I used to live with people like this. Uh, Prophet, I fucked this girl like forty times in Boston and Santa Fe, and she had a different name every time, but always the same dreams. And she squirts. Oh, she's definitely a squirter. This one, one thousand <laughs> percent. Who the fuck says like? I always loved Whole Foods since I was a kid. You know. You're teaching me that it's safe to shine. And more fun. Only when you're protected by a guardian angel. Oh yeah, I got you. <sighs> I got you. I was pretending to protect myself for so long. I was pretending to. It's like a Sofia Coppola movie. But good. Bazing. Be less bright. Because people would try to suck love out of me. <clears throat> like she is like she was just staring at the camera. I mean it's how much no, this has like three minutes left. I know. Now we just play. <sighs> I've waited so long to just have fun. Now I we literally wake fun. up in a, the Garden of Eden. We're having so much fun. And I just water the plants for ten minutes as you make me smoothie bowls. And then you what? make smoothie bowls too. And then I make smoothie bowls and because we're teaching make the colors. Each other, babe. We're teaching each other. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is fun. Like, I can't even, I cannot even imagine this, like, this being real. And I know it's real because I've, I've seen this person's other videos on their channel. And this is 100% real. I mean, just like, Jesus Christ. Come on. <laughs> Life is good. Nice talking to you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks for talking to me. Thanks for being here. Thank you for talking. I love when you talk. I love, I love the sound of your voice. And like I know talking is unnecessary, but also words are my love language. So please just like fucking speak your truth. Thanks. Fair enough. Words are my love language. Off. <clears throat> I'll speak my truth, or else I get a sore throat. I feel like I think in feelings and see this world through words. That's why I need to, like, have you talk to me. Huh? I don't know. I'm lost. Me too. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think in feelings. Ugh. Like, I don't think thoughts. I just feel. I just feel things. You feel things so hard. I don't think anything, ever. My brain is just, like... Maybe that's why you can manifest things so fast. It's, my brain is a challenge in, childhood imagination that's what my brain literally is that's literally like i feel like i mean there's so many things to say so many things what the brain that i have that's why you're so good at painting that's why i'm so good at everything because you I, are good at everything i never believed that i couldn't do something you might be the best artist on this planet i know straight up Shout out Kanye <laughs> and Picasso. Shout out to Kanye and Picasso. Like that's the de the depth of this well that we're drinking from. It's like shout out to Kanye because this video is a few years old, so it's before everything that's happened with Kanye and now before he became king. Uh, <laughs> love language, speak your truth. Equal, she has herpes one hundred percent, and not the cold sore kind. Yeah, because she's just out there experiencing things, you know, Prophet? She's just out there, like, living living her life, living her truth. A lot of times that, you know, involves a lot of dicks inside of you, a lot of strange men <laughs> and women. And Steve Jobs. Mm. You're my favorite place. Like, like, what were they doing when they shot this? The shot. So, is, did they have to like prepare this? They're like, yeah, just don't speak and look at me while I'm drinking this Jamba Juice. I feel like they would have been pretentious enough to have that conversation. I 
I'm just being held in your arms. Mindful please. hydration. And I'm just being held in your arms. I love your arms. They're so strong and safe. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> no? Let's send this it. This video is gonna be so beautiful. Can we send it out? It's gonna show people that so many. You see, he's like, can we just put it out on Insta? She's like, no. I have a production crew. My brother edits my videos. Uh, we're gonna do something real special. This is gonna take about six months. Nights are real. I always knew it. By the time this video was actually published, they were no longer together. <laughs> I'm willing to bet. Of I course. always fucking knew it. I was like, of course. Yeah, I can literally be compatible to anyone, but. <sighs> but, <sighs> but well, Jesus, if you can be compatible to anybody, that must make this guy feel like some chopped liver. Not a very nice thing to say when you really start thinking about it. Nah. So let's send it. Nah. What are we doing? Just cuddling the bed know. for. We're just cuddling in bed. Let's go. I just want to be. Fr- so they're like Jocko. They're like Jocko Willings types. Just send it, brah. I'm not with you, babe. I just want to look into your eyes like I could edit this video right but this now. this shit is heat. People need to see this. Uh, I know, but also... People need to wake up. I know, babe. People need to wake up. Uh, Yo. What? I know. I'm so excited. People need to buy in. It's just so sacred Also, to every single person that <laughs> views this video is going to raise their vibration high enough for them to attract their soul minds. Yeah. So we'll get ready for that. And then you can come hang out with us. We'll take over this planet. I just want to heal this world with you, babe. Cool. It's so easy. Mm, I just have to edit this video. Yeah, just make the video. Here, send it. Okay. Do you want to watch me edit it? Cool. Let's do it. Will you... I can teach you... Oh, I'm going to sit right here as you edit this video. You are. Okay. Okay. Send it. And that's how he got anal. (laughs) If I was this dude, I'd call her an F word. Yeah. (laughs) I actually, honestly, I probably would have said the same thing. Like, well, this is pretty... uh, What do they say? Uh, Gay... In game. Welcome to Nightcap, where we watch the hottest of videos. So this is the uh, next video is back to the Satanism bullshit. Once we can find something better, I don't know. I don't know. So this is a TED Talk. A TED Talk, the church's best friend, understanding Satanism. And this is from a teenage girl who gave a TED Talk talking about this stuff. Let's see where she's at. See what she has to say. You know, the children are our future. Out of the mouths of babes and whatnot. Let's go. Let's go. When you hear the word Satanism, what do you think of? Jesus. Dark, brooding, gothy teens sacrificing their neighbors' cats out in the middle of the woods at night while listening to groups like Baugh House and Sisters of Mercy. This is the public's general consensus of what an average Satanist is, yet in reality they're people like you and me who have been mistreated by the media and much larger organized religion. She's a fucking Arctic monkey shirt on. But uh, this is the sound is pretty low, so if you can't hear it, just let me know and we'll just move on. This is in due part to the satanic panic that swept the nation in the 80s, claiming that children's daycare services were really just abusing children to use them within satanic rituals. Many of the people convicted are currently serving life sentences for crimes they most likely didn't commit. Now, a lot of that stuff was cleared up, by the way, the the satanic panic stuff, especially when it came to the... uh, the Daycare facilities, but uh, that does not negate. They found a lot of weird shit, a lot of weird shit in the 80s, which is something that spurred on the police's belief that it was happening. Uh, They found cabins up in the up in the hills in California uh, where they found hundreds of like uh, of basically crushed baby skulls and uh, the remains of children underneath a house. Those are things that actually happened. So there was like an impetus from it. It was not like the boogeyman. Now, maybe for the public, the general public, obviously a lot of that stuff was spurred on. I can't remember where what the, the name of the book is, but it was just back in the day when I was reading a lot about this stuff. There is a book that was written by one of the police officers, one of the detectives, the LA, LA detectives or California detectives that 
was like on the case and he talks about like the reality versus kind of what happened versus the satanic panic. And there was more that there was way more to it than I think most people would appreciate or give, give it credit for or give credit to. Um, so this is not completely fair or in the up and up this, this framing from the Arctic monkeys chick dressed like a fucking, a nun. Satanism is a religion founded on the idea of loving and respecting yourself and others who deserve that love. Love is one of the most intense feelings felt by man. Another is hate. Forcing yourself to feel indiscriminate towards love is very unnatural. If you force yourself to love everyone, you only lessen the feelings towards those you should actually love. This is a yeah, this is a big thing. It's about selfishness. It's about like what uh, caters to you, and it's about your ego. Um, a lot of people will kind of like, like they, they make connections to like Ayn Rand and uh, objectivism. Uh, with this kind of stuff, but it's a, like the healthy ego stuff and that like you, you can only offer so much to people uh, and you can't offer it to everybody like, but it's kind of a misnomer. Like no Christian actually like literally does that. The idea is that you're open to people, that you're open to people, that you're open to helping people, to being charitable, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a literal, I love everyone. So when they say it, when this girl's saying this or framing it this way, like, that's obviously completely disingenuous. And I say that as somebody who is a much lapsed person, like, in that regard. Like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a secular list, sec, ugh, words, a secular list, but, um, but yeah. So even I know that. Come on. A verse from the Satanic Bible written by Anton LaVey in 1969. Modern Satanism has been seen at the forefront of many misunderstandings and misconceptions and is routinely ostracized by other religious groups due to the fact that the media seems to spread misconceptions and Christianity also spreads those misconceptions. Satanism has absolutely nothing to really do with Satan. Uh, Satan. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. Everyone thinks, oh, you know, she's a Satanist. She worships the devil. Well, really, I'm worshiping the Hebrew root of the word Satan as adversary. I'm worshiping the idea of knowledge and enlightenment and pride. LeVay is I mean, that's like the shallow nature of modern Satanism, I suppose, or even, I guess, if they're going to, if everybody wants to go with the ants and LeVay root, it was just some, for him literally a fucking, it was kind of a con and it was just a way to be hedonistic and then not have to pay taxes and have people donate him tons and tons of money. Then he wrote kind of his, uh, you know, the satanic Bible, which he's referencing, which is like the tenets of Satanism. And it's just like being selfish. Cater to yourself first before others, because if you cater to yourself and you're happy and you're fulfilled, that will be visited upon everyone in your life and around you. But they take this edge Lord thing where they're just like, Oh, but we're adversary. We're adversaries of God. We're, and that's why we do everything to just like defile it. And we have all this iconography and upside down crosses and all this like fucking Halloween shit for lack of a better way to put it. It's not, that's why nobody takes like any of this shit seriously. That's why it's always just like, cause they kind of just tell you the game. They just kind of say like, well, it's a game. It's, it's just whatever. It's been quoted with saying that Satan, it doesn't have like a long legacy. Like if you want to get into some creepy, weird shit, go look up like Anson LaVey and go look up who he was, who his family was and like where he comes from. Like then we you can get into some weird esoteric shit, but like, that's not what these people are doing. It's so, it's so fucking lame. There's this teenage girl up here dressed like a fucking beekeeper wearing an Arctic monkey shirt. One of the dorkiest things I've ever seen. Just like with that other guy, the, the, the ginger guy. He's just like, he has a Diablo three poster hanging in his bedroom. He's a grown ass man. <laughs> He's got a fucking, 
you know, because it's Satan, it's satanic, it's got the devil. Like, that is the depth of this shit. I wonder how she feels about Menzies blood. Been the church, uh, the best, the best friend to the church. He's kept him in business all these years, and that's completely right. We feed off of fear, and Satan is seen as the author of lies and promoter of evil. But he's really the author but of truth, don't you know? For Satanists, this isn't the case. Today, modern Satanism is a majority of the groups actually promote the true and final separation of church and state and promote diversity. Yet, it still begs the question of why are we ostracizing them? What about them is so inherently evil? What is it? I felt those misconceptions when I stood on this stage just a few weeks ago and announced that I was doing my topic on Satanism. There was a collective audible gasp, immediate <laughs> backlash. Everyone was like, oh, you know, she, she worships the devil. And they, she loved it. She fucking loved it. That's why you do that. That's why you do those kind of things. Even I know that, okay? I had a we I was in a high school band called the League of Doom and we played a a talent show competition at our my friend's high school and we did a song called Satan is your friend it was kind of like this take on like puff the magic dragon type folksy song but it was about how Satan was your friend and it was going to make you kill everyone in your life and you're going to feel good about it, basically. I suppose. That's how you could frame it. And uh, we did that to be provocative. It's not like we got off the stage and we're just like, oh, my God, you guys, people walked out. Like, because a bunch of people walked out of the auditorium when we started singing it. And um, you're just like, uh, it's not about <laughs> if, if you can't, like, deal with that. Like, well, she understands that. She understands what she's doing is what I'm saying in a very clumsy long-winded fashion just because she's a bit you know out there on the edgier side of life of course you know i just worship the devil immediately my dad kind of thinks that as well but you know that's none of my business <laughs> i again giving away the game as they say giving away the game Oh, my dad says that too, but that's none of my business. <laughs> like, yeah, you, <laughs> it's so disingenuous. That's what I mean. Like, they're just all, oh, they're just fucking edgelords. It's so irritating. From when that happened, I've dealt with a few things on this campus because of it. I've felt every stare. I've heard every whisper about how unmoral my top is, uh, topic is and how Horrible yeah, Arctic person. monkeys are no good. Your top is awful. I've stories from friends about how people had, you know, said that, oh, you know, why is she able to do a talk on Satanism if you can't do one on Christianity? And yet, there, I say, yes, there's the point exactly. Misinformation, being misinformed. You can't connect the two like that. Because what I'm, like, trying to say is that there should, there's no issue with Satanism. There's never been an issue with Satanism. We're, be, we're feeding off of what the media has to say. And the media, well, the media is getting their information from Christianity since it's such, it's the most widely practiced religion. And I mean, there's nothing wrong. You believe what you want to believe. I'm not saying you shouldn't believe what you want. I personally don't really believe in anything, but that's just me. You know, I love and respect all of you. That's just me, Daria. <laughs> I love and respect all of you. Not really. Uh, what? What? Are, uh, Michaela? Oh no! <gasps> a Michaela. Jordan Peterson is. Maybe this was an old Michaela Peterson video. She's gotten a lot of work done, so it's possible. But the point of the the fact of the matter is, is that we're letting this media. Well, the media kind of fuel our life and determine what we're able and not able to do. A good example of this actually would be the 1968 film Rosemary's Baby. Um, how many of you have seen it, actually? Okay, not, a f not very many, but that's okay. So 
Um, in this specific scene that I'm talking about, there's a bunch of elderly people, which are, you know, the quote unquote Satanists, but really they just engage in a traumatizing rape scene that's, you know, disguised as the satanic ritual. Of course, that's actually not the ritual, and it sounds like something that came straight out of the satanic panic, which would have happened more than, well, the movie took place more than 10 years before any allegations would have been made. Another famous scene to come out of Hollywood depicting Satanism is from the cult 1999 cult classic film Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick. I can't listen to this anymore. This is like a dumb teenager, I guess, or maybe a college student. <laughs> come on. Come on. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit. Would she give a... Why is it... In the majestic light of the undefilled, undefilled wisdom, awake and enter into the Arcadian wood. Therein all lingering falsehoods shall be as dead as bark, stripped from thy trunk, where thy futile <coughs> uh, hypocrisies, known and unknown, shall no longer envelop thee in mind and body. Cast off thy white robe of lies and confront thy prince, revealed as thee once began life undraped and unashamed thou mayest breathe again the first breath now now as night winds freshen from the far reaches of belial this is our innate in the ceremony the innate arises and would disrobe in this occasion and sits in the chair provided his feet supported by a footstool though this the black flame of satan the black flame referring to the candle that the priest would hold and pass four times under the soles of the innate's feet. Thou walketh in hell, thy senses are awakened to the joy of rebirth. The gates are flung wide and thy passage is heralded by the deathlessness, deathless cries of his guardian beast. His searing brand shall be evermore emblazoned on thy consciousness. It's fire. <laughs> Honey, Hollywood and Satanism came from the same people. I, I think that I'm done with this chick, but we can keep going. Um, so the truth behind modern Satanism is the thing we can look at. A Satanist and a Christian get handcuffed for 24 hours. It's a BuzzFeed video. I'm sure that's enlightening. Uh, what Satanists really want might surprise you. USA Today. Yeah, but this is the kind of the thing. I know it's like provocative, so like obviously something like Vice would cover it. But like it, it is the 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 philosophy is what is being mainstreamed because you have any time you see something or a documentary or anything about the subject, it's just people talking about the the kind of the philosophical grounding, like the way the why what they actually believe, dispelling the myths. And really, it's just kind of a philosophy of selfishness at the end of the day, honestly. I mean, they they use that as like the sly thing. They're just like, oh, well, you know, you can't love everybody. How Who could possibly do that? Well, no shit. It's like, no, and nobody thinks that. Nobody. It's like it's just creating a straw man argument so that you can tear it down. It's like it's so pedantic. It's so fucking stupid. And I'm being re I'm being reminded of how fucking dumb it is. It's been a long time since I've gone down this road. So we're going to watch one more of these. Then we're going to check out. Maybe it'll be the show closer. I don't know. Um, an Alex Jones video. It was a guy who claims. That uh, the Catholic Church has basically. Been taken over by Satanists. This girl just needs to read some Rimbod. God damn. Alright let's go. Let's roll. All hail Nyarlathar. All hail Nyarlathar. You said it, buddy. <laughs> Are they doing their own Rosemary's Baby situation? <laughs> Come on, Vice, just get to the meat. 
Vice was approached to market the new film Devil's Due after watching the film we were curious to see if devil worshipping actually exists in America today. Hi, it's Thomas. We're in Cleveland outside the House of Wills. Uh, if you can't trust a guy with that kind of face, I mean, look at this. He looks like he should be in a, They Might Be Giants. You know, that's a face you can trust. Inside the House of Wills. Uh, this is an old funeral home owned by one Eric Freeman, who is Cleveland's leading proponent of satanic thought. He is a formerly associated with Anton LaVey and some of his children from the Church of Satan. I'm curious about full-term possession, like wholly giving yourself over to dark forces, and I think of no better format for doing so than Satanism, where the foundational right is selling your soul to the biggest dark force of all, the devil. Um, so tonight we will be conducting uh, one of the satanic rituals as written by LaVey, the Ceremony of the Nine Angles, and uh, we will hopefully be summoning the Goat of a Thousand Ages and maybe indoctrinating ourselves into the Order of the Nine Angles, which is a secret society of Satanists, perhaps the most secret society of Satanists, who advocate animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, and reshaping the world according to your will. Yeah, so did that voodoo guy and fucking the devil's advocate. I'm not impressed. Not impressed. Let's see if it works. Modern Satanism, the Order of the Nine Angels. Hail Satan. I, I feel like anybody that like references Anton LaVey is a joke. Like it's a joke to me. Anton LaVey was pretty open about that he's like he that he's like full of shit. You know? Hail Satan! The Devil's Mass! I've seen this. I've watched the whole thing. It's really like, dumb. What is Satanism? Like, really? I mean, to me, it's a logical format of exactly <laughs> how to fundamentally get the most out of life without any kind of dogma, superstition, fear, or anything else controlling you. It's you being completely in control of your universe. Okay. And in Satanism, we have our own, you know, general structure of how we treat people. Oh, can you describe that structure? Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. We absolutely do not turn the other cheek. Um, Stupidity is the number one sin. If you're magic and you create something, never doubt yourself, because once you doubt yourself, it's gone. And that's the, that's the worst part about heaven or hell or any of that, is that people fundamentally believe that after this existence, they're gonna go to a better place. So what you do here doesn't matter. And that, that's really sad. I would say these things like the skulls, the... That's not true. Again, see, it's not true. And it's, like, I, I would agree, like, you know, kind of broadly, like, you know, people should put a lot of attention and import on the life that you live. But uh, Christians don't believe that. Even the most milquetoast Christians don't believe that. No, the entire idea behind it is the afterlife is a reward for the effort that you put into this one. If you go to heaven, it's because you put in a lot of work. That's what they would say. Not just some casual thing that they just like, oh, well, you know, whatever, I guess. It doesn't matter. I can't wait till we die. Like, that's like what, if you get into like the the weird, like, suicide cult people. Jonestown. That weird alien cult. I can't remember what it's called. That all drink the Kool-Aid. You know what I'm talking about. Tombstones, the coffins, any of these various objects of art are memento mores, are just symbols of death. These uh, do not imply in any way that we're the least bit eager to die or have any sort of Freudian death wish. On the contrary, these are constant reminders that death is around the corner and death doesn't present a better uh, than what we have now world. Can you walk me through the roots of uh, American Satanism? I would state that uh, most ideas of Western Satanism has probably come from the Fool Society back in, the, uh, in Germany in the uh, early 1900s. After that, you absolutely have Crowley, who is the most Heaven's evil gay, man thank you. You know, alive. I mean, when you look at him, his do what thou wilt turned into do your own thing, which is absolutely instrumental in the structure of the 60s, the 70s. You know. Do what thou wilt. It was an important thing that people glommed onto, but also people projected that Anton LaVey was the progenitor or the influencer of that. Because a lot of people did not know who, uh, not Anton LaVey, Lester Crowley. Oh my God, I've become one of them. Lester Crowley, do what thou wilt. Kind of a big statement for, for, uh, for an ideological perspective. And 
I don't know like how many people like in the 60s and 70s really would have been that aware of that, even if you were in the scene or if you were like a free love person. Although this is kind of how these ideas get laundered, right? They get laundered this way. Oh, I got an ice cream. <sighs> Prophet donated an ice cream. Oh, the sweets, the sweets. Thank you, my friend. One day, in about a year from now, <laughs> I'll have enough to cash cash something out. Um, but like, it's it's an idea. It's like idea laundering, concept laundering, and then now they're kind of comfortable to come back and be like, "Oh, these this is where we got these things from," because nobody gives a fuck. Nobody has like a connection to it anymore. But even today, with Let Your Freak Flag Fly, like, that's all based on Crowley, who's the most evil man in the world, but then you have this hippie peace movement that spawns from this gentleman. You can even go to Charles Manson, who was uh, instrumental in Atwa, what is it, Air Trees, Water, Earth, I believe. The Green Movement today is all based on Charles Manson. Yeah, dude, oh, it's cool, dude, the Charles Manson. No, it's, the Green Movement is not based on Charles Manson. He was a paranoid schizophrenic and a showman. On top of it as well. Manson, this is a man that's. Imagine, like, a good. I'm glad it's this guy doing that, but he's like attributing the Green Movement to Charles Manson. Hey, more power to you, buddy, I guess. Still in prison today who never killed anyone. Like, if you want to talk about Will and what you can create, that man, like, that man knows what's going on. Yeah. And that's why they have him in a cage. And if you ask him, like, hey, do you like jail? He'll just straight up, he'll be like, what jail? Because he knows that he can do whatever he wants in his mind. Is he completely sane? Absolutely not. Um, but that doesn't mean that he's completely ignorant as to the way things work. It's the duality of nature that people don't comprehend. They only see one thing when they look at things. The altar is a living slab of flesh in the personification or in the person of a nude young woman. The altar stone or the mantle which holds the altar was made from cobblestones from the San Francisco streets that were broken up in the 1906 earthquake. Satan is simply a word that means the adversary or the opposition or the accuser. It doesn't necessarily mean evil or brutality or cruelty. It simply means the dissenter. This is evidently today's ritual room in the basement. I oh, and these are, I presume, the participants in uh, the ceremony we're about to conduct. It's like Rivers Cuomo being like <laughs> Rivers Cuomo from from Weezer, like taking us to the darkest depths of of human interest, human experience. He's like, uh, yeah. God damn those half Japanese girls, but uh shit, have you heard about Anton LaVey? Wacky stuff. This looks about right. The Orator of the Nine Angles. It's like, an, it's like a journalist being let into North Korea and they just like let them see what they want to see. <laughs> hey guys, we got a journalist coming. Can we put on a show? Can we do something interesting, kinda kooky? Yeah, sure, Todd actually taken from uh, Michael Aquino, who is the co-founder of the Church of Satan. With LaVey, wrote the Satanic Rituals. At least the mentality behind it is you utilize different trappings to collect more power so that you have more power to alter reality. Oh, sure, of course. Azeroth, great center of the cosmos, let thy fluids sing unto us, lulling us against the terrors of thy domain. Whether it existed or didn't exist, it exists today. That's the mentality of you know, Crowley, Manson, all of it. It's all a mental state where you restructure the entire universe through your thought process. All hell yeah, it's just, it's just like basic bitch postmodernism. It's just like, oh, the world is what you want it to be. Every interpretation is valid. So whatever you say, it must be, it must be valid in, in some universe. It's really that simple. Like this, it's just ah, it's so fucking, it's so disappointing. If you're gonna have like a counter to Christianity, I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, Rhyme scheme says, listen, I am proud that this squat got their shit together for this presentation. That's true. That's true. They really were. They've really brought some production value. We got some uh, Walmart candles and a red light somewhere. 
Satanists don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in heaven, hell, God, anything. Yeah, they just do rituals for the fuck of it. Just like, whatever, dude. Like, hey, dude, like, uh, uh, hail Satan, hail Satan. Uh, just like, for whatever. Yeah, it's just for whatever, dude. It's for funsies. There's nothing worse than ironic people. There's nothing worse, I think, honestly. I would put these people right next to the Shrek Fest people. Like, they're no different to me. I look at them the same way. Like, oh, we don't believe, we don't actually believe in Satan or anything. What are you, a fucking idiot? Hail Satan, hail Satan. Come to our dark fucking thing. We're going to spread Mincy's blood all over each other. We're going to be like, hail Satan. But uh, Satan's, we don't believe in that shit. That's fucking stupid. What are you talking about? Like, it's so child, it's so fucking dumb. Just ed- edge lords, <laughs> edge lords us. everywhere. We believe in our will, altering reality. That it's your life, it's your reality, and you have the ability to do whatever yo, you yo, want. Yo. And either you can do it or you can't do it. You can either be a victim or you can be a winner. And it's up to you on which choice, which path you want to take. You can either be part of it or you can be it. <laughs> sure, devils do. It probably came out. I'm sure. That's a weird, you know, cross promotional thing there. Um, so now we've heard the white man. We've heard these crackers talk about goddamn Satan for hours, about ninety minutes worth of cracker talk. So I want to give you who is the Lester Crowley? Ab Soul explains. This is from Hot New Hip Hop, a YouTube channel from twenty sixteen. He's gonna lay down some truth. Some truth for us. Some truth bombs. That. I gotta tell you. Easter food. Not treating me well. Attacking my heart and soul. Anyways. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna see what. uh, Ab Soul has to say about. Lester Crowley. Yo, yo, yo. Sab Soul. Pastor Blacklip, TDE. Pastor Blacklip? Like, really? Is that really what he calls himself? Pastor Blacklip. Jesus, guy. I'm on hot new hip hop. I'm all about getting to the root of things. And, um, Mr. Crowley has been, um, instrumental throughout music uh for a long for before i was born you know what i mean uh led zeppelin beatles um there's a lot of great artists that you know are the um building blocks for even hip-hop so me me understanding that you know what i mean and uh you know digging into his story and you know understanding why he's been so you know relevant and and, you know influential in music culture you know i think it was important for me to you know reinstill that if you didn't know that if you if you missed that part you know what i mean if you missed that part of the culture of music in general this this beyond hip-hop but just music in general what the fuck is he saying dude Well, what the fuck is he saying? He's had a big influence on the culture. At first, at first sight, he's a you know he's the wickedest man alive, right? That's what he you know he's very wicked man. But if you dig into, if you dig into the poetry and you you know you read between the lines of his poetry and you know you dig into his story, a lot of the things are you know make more sense to you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it made a lot of sense with me. A lot of the things that he discusses resonates with me. Well, I would just want to leave you with this. Uh, you know, my album is called Do What Thou Wilt. And it's based off, um, it's influenced by um, Crowley's The Book of the Law. Love, the lemma. Yeah. Love is the law. Love is the only law. He's like, yeah, I saw Jay-Z kind of use the same references, so I guess I'll go for it. Why not? He's successful. Love under will, the law is for all. And, you know, if you read the Christian Bible, that's the only commandment that Jesus left. So, you know, 
also a great quote is uh the righteous will remain righteous and the filthy will remain filthy so um thinking along those lines you know what i'm saying you know and even do what thou wilt itself you know free will is what it kind of sounds like right so you know all of these you know just me you know into theology and into history and these things putting these parallels together these different ideas it's just it's just great stuff you know what i mean wow i expected that to be like more scathing he was just like no Aleister crowley is cool Like, when you go to hip-hop, you'll either find people very, like, wary and skeptical, or you'll find, like, big fans, like Jay-Z. All that was from actively engaging. So when you cash out, I require an ice cream. Lemon party bitches. Yeah, my wife just showered me with lemons. Oh, you got some to catch it up to do. They were, in fairness, lemons that I gave her. I actually didn't mean to. I just thought... I have this lemon chest that, like, I can hit when it's full enough. And I can disperse it to whoever. But apparently, I saw Rhyme Scheme as the top commenter, which is odd. Which is odd. I thought I was given profits and lemons. Because he gave me so many. He gave me so many lemons. So many lemons. Lemon life. Uh, yeah, but, you know, there's... You know, we could get conspiratorial. Giant sex- swath section of the hip-hop community totally down with spreading Satanism. Just saying. I've seen YouTube videos, dog. I've watched a six-hour analysis of Umbrella. Frame by frame, I know what I'm talking about. All right, well, now we're going to have to jump over to a different site. We're going to see if this works. Uh, we're going to go over to BitChute. Now, BitChute, not super reliable. Even just to be able to play a fucking video. The blockchain only works so much as people that watch this stream know. Like, I'm waiting. This thing is buffering right now. Can I, if I pause it, does it like pre-buffer? I don't know. Jesus fucking Christ. No one can deny we're living in incredibly epic times. Leo Zagami, I want to get your take, and then constitutional lawyer Robert Barnes in the other studio on Trump's Achilles heel, our Achilles heel, what the system's going to do, who the different power structures are, and like again. Now, as far as I understand, this is a dude that is making claims that the Catholic Church is now under the control of Satanism. So I was like very excited. I was like, oh my God. I hope this pays off. That's what I'm saying. I hope it pays off. A game of risk, how they're going to try to stop the American recovery and what's unfolding. And Leo, during the break, you were telling me Putin just flew in to meet the Pope yesterday on July 4th, uh, who the different factions are and what's really happening. Well, he was uh, actually sending a, a message to Trump by flying into Rome and visiting the Pope. Because, you see, the Pope uh, is, uh, is this very powerful figure at the moment that... Uh, is uh, uh, more of a political figure than a religious one. and uh, it, it... So this is like from 2019, I think. Just to give you guys some context. He's, he's supporting all the way whatever the Democrats are doing or whatever the left wing is doing. So Putin himself has a, a dark agenda, which people tend to forget. The fact that the KGB infiltrated back in the days so many seminaries and had approximately 7,000 agents that infiltrated. You know, they also say about, you know, in the 40s, seminaries were infiltrated by um, 
We'll say homosexuals. That's what they say. The Catholic Church. And they didn't stop their operation, which is to destroy the Catholic faith and, 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 and reduce it to what we see nowadays, which is basically a, a liberal theology nightmare full of communist perverts, uh, pedophiles running around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and wanting mm -hmm. illegal immigrants so they can take their children and, and, and bring them in their pedophilia rings. It's, it's, it's a complete nightmare. And, and so I like the cut of this guy's jib because he's just like, yo, they're trying to keep, steal your kids to fuck them and sell them. Uh, yeah, I buy it. I buy it. I buy the Catholic Church would be into that. So the fact that they met on the 4th of July was to send a message to America. Well, we receive your message. Just so you all know, we're drinking something called Redemption Ride tonight. Just for this occasion. On with the show. Message, dear elite, dear Jesuits, and... We are not scared. That's what, what will be our answer. Because uh, after what we saw yesterday in Washington, D.C., we are definitely not scared. But let's be clear. There are a lot of great Catholics, a lot of great people. In fact, a lot of great Republicans <laughs> or, or, or you know, great Protestants. Uh, Catholics have nothing to do with the Pope. The Pope uh, I say it's different uh, factions. So explain. So, yeah, I mean, there is a factions in it's the Catholic the Church. And Raymond Burke, for example, Pope. Uh, heads one, a more conservative faction, traditionalist. Uh, We've had all these American cardinals come out and say, you can't let Islam take over Europe. Yeah, you can't have borders but, here. But the moment in which you even mention that, for example, I just cited the words of Raymond Burke against Muslim immigration. I got blocked for 30 days on Facebook. So just for citing the words of a car. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, but that demonstrates uh, what, what they're doing. They have taken over. These Italians, man, they get fucking fiery. It's just like, listen. Uh, they. <laughs> Look at that. How come out is. Full disclosure I'm having my second shot of Wild Turkey 101. I'm 150 medals in, and the pen is about to get raped. Sounds like a good plan, my, my friend. I might join you on the edibles front. Let's just fucking roll. Over the Catholic Church, and it's not the Church of Jesus just, anymore. Exactly, and it's yeah, just like the universities are, are anti-free speech now. I would never want you to have control over your comments, Prophet. Come on. And are hell holes. I mean, th that's what the left takes everything over, and everything they take over, they use sex cult operations. Explain that, because it, it, it's how they compromise people. Well, we saw the Bishop of Santa Fe bringing uh, these uh, illegal immigrants through. Yeah, let's roll some of that video while he talks. This happened last week. Uh, Bishop uh, of Santa Fe uh, uh, illegally bringing people across. The defiant of U.S. laws. I mean, why nobody, uh, nobody's doing anything? I mean, if you are a bishop, you, uh, uh, here in America in 1776, there was the separation of church and state also. So we should do something about it. Don't, don't you think, Alex? I mean... Absolutely. Well, I mean... I saw that video last week. Uh, 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 <laughs> this guy is so Italian. He's like, isn't this evil, huh? And he just kind of goes like this. He's just like, yeah. What do you have to say about the things I have said? Hey. Hey. We played. Here he is bringing thousands of people across. Boom. Breaking the border to tell the whole world, rush us. And, uh, of course, uh, okay, the so, victims. Okay, so this was a year ago, ironically. Literally what fucking has just happened. <laughs> oh my God. Kind of a little bit perceptive there. Hey, Jane. A little perceptive. They're always the same. The children. The children that are exploited. And nowadays we find more and more children at the border who are not really with their real parents, but mm -hmm. with people who take them along so they can pass through more easily. Uh, Which is why... That's the giant part, the unspoken part of what's going on there right now. There are sex traffic kids sleeping in fucking hovels right now that don't know how to answer questions. And nobody is fucking intuitive enough to fucking suss it out for themselves. There is some fucking dark shit going on in this world. Especially when it comes to fucking Im immigration. Sean, can I trust the nuns in Richmond? You can trust them on a person-to-person -person basis, but 
Uh, that's about it. I don't know. I'm so far removed from that stuff. Like, you know, I, I hope you can. I hope you can, dude. I think they're probably like in their souls, in their spirits, in their stomachs. Are they good people? Probably. Probably. I, I you know, because they're so secluded. It's like such a bubble. The nuns, especially. You only got to start worrying when it's like Brother Andre or Sister Philomena. Those are the people that I would be like. Just, you know, listen. <laughs> listen a little extra. They get immediately inserted in pedophile rings. The exploitation of children today also by the LGBT community that re- just received a few days ago, Alex, the LGBT community received one organization, a very powerful organization, received $700,000 by the U.S. Bishop Conference. How is that possible? How, why is the U.S., and they have this Jesuit called James Martin, who is like uh, pro-LGBT all the way, and he is involved in it. So why is this U.S. Bishop Conference giving money to the LGBT community, LGBTQ, or whatever you want to call it? I mean, with all the respect, the Catholic Church should be helping the poor, should be helping all those homeless people that we see. Exactly. What is the mandate of these facilities? Honestly, this guy is like, you know, maybe I wouldn't agree with him on everything. He's spent a lot of truth about like the fundamentals of how this stuff works. Uh, why aren't you helping the poor? Why aren't you helping homeless people? What the fuck are you getting involved with politics for? What the fuck? Makes it seem like there is something else going on. Now, if people want to know, go check out Sean Watch's uh, creepy Nambla documentary, chicken hawk you want to know what's going on you want to know the insidious nature of all of this stuff go find that go find it flooding the cities i mean does the lgbtq community need the, the money of of of, of absolutely i don't think so absolutely right. here it is texas bishop escorts central american migrants across border bridge to protest U.S. policy, and they just let him do it. I mean, this is the incredible arrogance. Let's go back to constitutional lawyer Robert Barnes. You can see it. World government, the U.N., yeah, the Vatican. A lawyer, maybe you can explain us. How organizing the collapse of the borders, telling us we've got to pay for everybody once they get here. Uh, Beto O'Rourke campaigning in Mexico for president with illegals. You can see the plan to break the U.S. up, just like the U.N. said they would do, Barnes. Uh, no doubt. I mean, for example, to show sort of how things are aligned or what allegiance is there, the Southern Poverty Law Center is involved in legal uh, action against people who exposed uh, the various church activities that were engaged in illicit criminal activities in helping illegal immigrants access the country and avoid detection. And even though they so here someone is uh, doing their lawful duty, reporting criminal behavior, criminal behavior that happens to involve members of a local uh, of, of the church, and they are the ones targeted for legal action. And they uh, at, I mean, to date, they haven't been able to find counsel to defend them because of the problems they face, and they don't have lots of money or means. So that's just one example. If we look at another example of this sort of effort to be anti-patriotic and the threats that Trump faces, you look at Google yesterday just couldn't put up Betsy Ross's flag all day. They couldn't even put up any American flag all day when they usually always celebrate whatever holiday it is. They showed baseball. Exactly. They showed baseball instead, which is also a great America tradition, but there's no reason not to include the American <laughs> flag that where from which baseball comes from. But they couldn't do it. And he you really does like look like John C. Omar, Riley, yes. who celebrated Somalian Independence Day, but wouldn't celebrate American Independence Day. So that's the sort of mindset and mentality. And as we were talking about with the European Union uh, yesterday, what you're seeing in the United States is going to the, uh, the question that Leo asked, why isn't there more effort by by, by democratic cities by the catholic church by the political left to do something for the people that are homeless in the united states instead of doing what austin is doing which is encouraging and incentivizing homelessness by legalizing it in a wide range of locations all across the city the reason is very simple they want disruption they want chaos they want to justify denationalizing police forces and creating sort of a globalized structure an eu police and army structure in the european union something equivalent here in the united states that's right overrun the borders break them and then demand a 
continental security perimeter for the North American Union, which is in their own documents. They said, we'll use migrant waves, disease, and economic collapse to force it on the U.S. and Europe. And now, I'm glad you brought that up because you're in another studio. Coming back, I'm going to show the local newscast saying Austin is adopting something stronger than Portland or stronger uh, than Seattle or San Francisco or L.A., saying they can sleep in your front yard, uh, that homeless from the world come here, everything's free, then Democrats own the places that get the federal and state money, only get part of the homeless, they make money off each homeless person. This is insane until you realize a larger game plan, Robert. Oh, exactly. And it all relates to things like the citizenship question. So I think the president actually does have a solution to that of a variety of legal scholars, and including a Texas uh, law professor, Josh Blackman, <coughs> who's friends with mine. Uh, we've recommended a proposal to the president that I think the president can take that actually will make sure the citizenship question is included because constitutionally under the 14th Amendment, it has to be included. In Sometimes I look at this guy. Sometimes I look at him. Just between us girls. I think he's CIA. I think he's a plant. I think Robert Barnes is a plant. <laughs> Something about him doesn't sit right with old Papa Sean. In order to enforce the 14th Amendment rights of states all across the country. So hopefully that will actually happen and occur, but it's all part of the same species. To trying to destroy America is part of trying to destroy nationalism, trying to destroy borders so that power is no longer localized. That's it. It's global. simple multinational corporations that think they're too big for their britches. Coming in and taking over your country and buying off your politicians is real simple. And these idiots are like, yay, free stuff. The, this multinational secret Chicom funded consortium tells me they're going to give me free stuff. Once And, and the Democrats are all one-upping each other. Everything's free. Homes, tuition, money, education. It's all free. Who pays for it? And by pushing inside America more and more South Americans who are Catholics, uh, that means that they are incentivating their own election. Leozagami.com. He's like, yo, here I talk, you know, you can trust me. Electorate, their own show. Let's be clear, leftist Catholics. Yeah, but they're all, nowadays, the Catholic Church is in the hands of a Pope. That's communists. <laughs> That's it. You know, there is no real opposition because even Raymond Burke was punished by the Pope and sent to a remote island when he was. No, it's true. The Antichrist has captured the Catholic Church. <laughs> Every Catholic I know understands that. We'll be right back. Whoa. Stage. Paul Joseph Watson is suiting up right now to host the fourth hour. Is that like really going to happen? Are we experiencing this in real time? Look, I meant to go to calls. I didn't. But Alex Jones very rarely ever goes to calls. He makes he makes a statement constantly. He's like, oh, the news is too hot. It was too spicy. I am going to suit up with whoever wants to volunteer out there with our crew. And I'm going to come here to this studio tomorrow from, but let's get it out of the way. I'll come in here at about 11 a.m. <laughs> I think we should go live at noon tomorrow and air all of Trump's speech. And then if we can't open the phones up and take people's calls about it because it really needs to be done. So 11 a.m. Central tomorrow, special Saturday edition. You know Trump's me working tomorrow. Too much history's happening. I'll be here. And please, listeners, we were in the red for most of this year until the huge attacks, the Facebook ban, and the attempt to plant child porn on us and all of it. And listeners really saw how serious it was when they said that you can't even say my name on Facebook. This guy's he's a pro. He's a pro. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes these computers have a little bit of a hiccup, but that's all right. That that's what happens. That's what happens with love. I want to get your take on that because we're living in a time where there's a different type of uh, sensitivity and sensibility about race. Yeah, well, you know, and I was glad to see that. And um, my hope is that that they didn't just do it to do it; that they understand the significance there. And look, there are a lot of things in our history that are still very painful the Confederate flag that still flies in some places mm -hmm. uh, and is used as a symbol. And uh, I believe that we need to move toward an inclusive America 
that understands that pain, that doesn't wipe it away from history in the sense that it still belongs in a museum or we need to read about it and understand the significance because that's how you learn and make sure that we don't make the same mistakes in the future, mm -hmm. but does not glorify it, does not celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, I mean, that is the most amazing statement from Julian Castro. This is the same guy that just said a week ago in the debates that we need tranny men, trans men, to be able to have abortions. They don't have uteruses. And now he goes, oh, you can have this flag in a museum, the original American flag made by an abolitionist. But you can't glorify it. I mean... It's, it's insane. Think about what this guy's saying. I mean... Well, we have to exercise these symbols or we'll lose it. And, and again, I'm going to do a special broadcast today just on the Caitlin Bennett article. I'm staying here till 6 now. We're going live till 7. I'm doing one hour on uh, the Caitlin Bennett article, newswars.com, infowars.com. Whole hour on it. Because he literally talk just about made it. that. So they're going to fly to the country it's as we fought for freedoms. Um, it, 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 it just, it's just next level. Robert Barnes? I don't know what you're... Well, I mean, the reason why InfoWars is targeted is for the same reason that all these sort of anti-American activities are taking place by people like Congressman Castro, by people like Congresswoman Omar, by people like uh, AOC. It's people who really don't love and believe in America because it's the greatest resistance to... No, this is not... No, this is not... has nothing to do with uh, Nas X or Little Nas or whatever. This is way before that. Way before that like last year to the efforts that they're trying to do so infowars is america infowars is americana infowars is independence day infowars is july 4th because it reflects and represents americana at its core not just protects it defends it as it does on a day-to-day -day basis that's why they obsessively hate over infowars that's why it's not a surprise they're trying to ban caitlin bennett from even showing a shirt that's a pro-american shirt uh, that just because it has a correlation with infowars because in the minds of the cultural social political big tech uh, uh, oligarchic elite left they believe America is the, the idea of America the spirit of America is the great threat to their ideas of globalism and global ideals and ideals that remove local little d democratic power which they have been trying to take away really for centuries I mean the American experiment was radical and was revolutionary we had been used to being dominated by goodbye Barnes. because it is the tip of the spear for keeping America and Americana alive today He's like, there it is. Well, you know, Castro and all these other Democrats, they work for foreign powers. They work for multinational corporations that set up the euro, that set up the North American Union. They want to conquer countries. And they learn we can't do it with tanks. We do it politically. We undermine the nation. We teach a large group of people to hate the country they live in and to identify with the communist Chinese. They identify with the communist Chinese, but they also identify with the communists in South America, like... For example, some of them have even uh, uh, glorified Maduro, who is still in charge <laughs> of Venezuela, by the way, and who hasn't been, uh, uh, let's say, oh, see you, put bro, aside bro. because he's protected by Pope Francis and by Russia. So th this gives you an idea of who is behind the scenes defending these, uh, these, uh, these uh, globalist stooges of the left. So I think that a guy like Castro should be ashamed for what he said, ashamed, but he doesn't have any sense of shame. That's the problem with uh, left-wingers. They are just uh, adamant in going and pursuing this anti-American ideology. And, of course, you've got this Castro guy who served in the Obama administration running for president. There's his bio right there on screen. Uh, let's play that clip I mentioned earlier, or I'll give you time. Just give me a thumbs up. Hey, hey, hey. He came out. I don't want to just mention this. I want to play it. We're going to talk about it. He said that, oh, we don't just want women to have the right to for abortion. We want trans men to have the right to have abortions. Which is insane. Uh, and this is the blurring of the line. It's something that people take seriously. People just are so lost when it comes to this shit, but it's just like right in front of your goddamn face. So, so a man doesn't have a uterus, <laughs> but but he wants to make you accept this, and the crowd goes, "Woo!" I mean, this is exciting. Here it is. To universal health care. So, uh, so, 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 Secretary I, Castro, this one is for you. All of you on stage support a woman's right to an abortion. You all support some version of a government health care option. Would your plan cover abortion, Mr. Secretary? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, I don't believe only in reproductive 
uh, freedom. I believe in reproductive justice. Just justice. Kill that baby. Is, no, seriously, like, imagine, imagine, like, positing that as justice. It's just, it's fucking justice, dude. Kind of weird. What that means is that just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor, doesn't mean they shouldn't have exercise that right to choose. And so I absolutely would cover the right to have an abortion. More than that, uh, everybody in this crowd and watching at home knows that in our country today, a person's right to choose is under assault in places like Missouri, in Alabama. Oh, stop right there. By the way, we didn't edit that. That's a computer glitch. We're going to re-download that clip. We're going to re-download it because everybody know we didn't edit that. He actually said um, a trans man has a right to abortion. Uh, well, I, I'm still recovering from that. Uh, that evening when I saw this scene, and I wrote it the day after on my social media, I mean, it's unheard of. I mean, he must uh, be into some twilight zone where men are capable of giving birth. But actually, they are pushing that agenda. Well, it's you an know? overthrow reality. Let's come back and finish with both you guys. And Paul Joseph Watson takes over. Stay with us. Robert Barnes earlier it's brought this come. up. We see the same thing with Europe. Giant it's gotta come. We're up to 90% of people five years later don't have jobs or homeless. Man, 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 man. son, Rex Jones, knew some Spanish kids three years ago that stayed at his mother's house when he was there part-time from Spain who were exchange students. And his friend that he still talks to on the internet every week is in the hospital fighting for his life in Madrid, stabbed by a North African migrant for no reason. Stabbed a few of his other friends, just walked up to him at a bus stop, started stabbing. Of course, the police aren't even going to charge him. They just... They said there's so many we can't stop it. They block roads, they rape, they kill. What's the larger plan? Here's an Austin newscast where they said they can sleep basically in your front yard or anywhere else except the city council building. Hey man, like you people should pay attention to what is going on. Third world countries, lesser lesser fortunate places. I'm telling you. It's only a matter of time before that is your reality and you they will prey on your sympathies. Prey on your your desire to be helpful. Holding here it is. Several other major cities that allow camping within city limits. In Seattle, camping is also legal except in parks. In San Francisco, an appeals court ruled last year that cities could not criminalize people for sleeping or camping in public areas if shelter isn't available. And in Portland, camping is only banned on public property and public rights of way. Now we'll have to establish that the underlying conduct posed a hazard or a danger to someone before we can take any action. As KXAN's Eugene Cho found out, that last part about camping still has many people worried. Police Chief Brian Manley told the city council, under these new changes, if you set up a tent, say, here on Congress Avenue, police cannot make you move as long as you're not blocking the public right of way, an entrance to a business, or as long as you're not posing safety risks to yourself or others. This is about the next student who will be groped, followed, assaulted, or possibly murdered in the West Campus area. We were chased. It's, it's not pleasant to be so frightened. Some people worry about safety and what will happen to downtown streets since people can now set up tents without getting sighted. But the mayor says the city manager has been directed to come up with guidelines later this summer for safe places to camp and other solutions for homelessness. He doesn't think a tent city will be an issue in the meantime. I just don't think we're going to see that kind of thing happen over an eight-week period of time. If it does, that linebacker. Let's stop him. Are you insane? That's not going to happen if you open that door. Are you fucking crazy? Yeah, this dude should look at what what goes on in San Francisco. Uh, I want to get Zagami's quick take on this. You're going to be back on with. The war room in Owen Schroyer uh, today. Well, in Europe, we had this happening for years. My wife, who is here in the studio, she's been harassed by North Africans for the last 10 years living in Italy all the time. I mean, I live in the car alone, and I go to a shop, and they will start knocking on the car. Uh, she will go on her own, and she, uh, at one point, they will stop her in the middle of the street. It, it was just, I mean, it was insane. But they're third world. They're virtuous. 
I don't care. I mean, I'm joking. I'm sure they're gone. I know, I know, I know. And and and, and they just let them do whatever they, they whatever they want. It's just like insane. And they so, can, why is the left doing it? To destroy the very fabric of the West. To destroy our families, to in- incentivate the sense of isolation that brings also these people to become homeless, because a lot of them are from the U.S. They're all on drugs. They're all yeah. it, 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 it's a it's a whole culture now. Barnes, where does this go? Well, no place good unless the president is successful. I mean, that's why the, what uh, Leo said earlier about the, that President Trump is the is the main area of resistance to this sort of globalist agenda. <laughs> now, this dude definitely directed his tombstone. And Robert Barnes, this is from an era where he was totally just a, a Trump shill. So it's kind of aggravating. There's been other successes politically. It's sad. Uh, in, in Italy, as he's talked about. There's been successes in the EU elections for the Brexit party. There's been successes in Brexit itself. But you see all the resistance that's been done. I mean, the, the UK cannot put into place the Brexit. Yeah, okay. Okay, buddy. You, you, that's great. That's great. That's some great stuff you're saying. Uh, let's go to this. Okay, listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever you watch like a crackpot flat earth or whatever, they will always have like an impressive an impressive opening. And they'll use copyrighted material Almost as if it's a personal attack against me. Oh, goodness. Get to it, fucker. Okay, this guy's gonna say... Oh my goodness, these Catholic institutions look like snakes. Scales, eyes, people. Hey, you proved me wrong, buddy. Honestly, if that's what it really looks like, hold on. If that's what it looks like, that's creepy as fuck. Serpent's Eye, NWO, pyramids everywhere. There's pyramids. They're fighting everywhere in your house. You see it? You feel it? Demonic hand signs. Hand sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you can see that. Like, it's not as, as if, like, the entire project of those fucking people is to be subversive and change all that stuff like come on man come on these are sauces hands to me like they'll say this retroactively but like this is where those the satanist types whatever as their mandate is to be adversarial is to uh, aggressively attack these things. I mean, come on. Come on. The fuck? Let's be smart. Let's be fucking out there. Let's be cool. <sighs> Alright, let's do it. We're gonna do it. I've never heard this before. You're gonna get a wildly drunk hot reacts only to this. Let's go. Devil come will do that. Devil come will do that. Oh my goodness. Where the fuck do we go from there? That's really, that's the real question. <laughs> Rhymes keeps said, listen, this is a night for in college for me. What's the hubbub? What's the hubbub? Um. Mm, few places we could go. All right, we're gonna have to. We gotta end the show. We gotta end it with something. 
with something something. show with The miracles that have, hold on, the miracles that have silenced skeptics. Let's go for that. A lot of devil, devil business. What a drunk ass devil business. But uh, let's go here and see what is there. See what is on offer. How you doing? I'm Callan, and this is Slapped Ham. From a statue of the Virgin Mary crying to a levitating monk, these are the most bizarre religious miracles ever documented. But just quickly before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more mysterious content just like this. In 1996, a stain on a glass window was discovered in the Seminole Finance Company building. This mysterious stain resembled the shape of the Virgin Mary. In the first few weeks, over 500,000 visitors paid homage to the image in Clearwater, Florida. By the end of the year, those numbers were well into the millions. Believers thought the Virgin Mary was sending a message to her followers. However, some people thought it was nothing more than corrosion, but they couldn't explain why it resembled the Virgin Mary. Mike Krismanek owned the building and believed it was divine intervention. He turned the stain into a religious shrine. The building was eventually sold to a Catholic charity. Mm -hmm. The image was present until 2004 when a teenager shot the shrine with a slingshot, damaging <laughs> it permanently. In 1973, the Roman Catholic Church recognized a miracle in Akita, Japan. Sister Agnes Sasagawa saw visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the town of Yuzawadai. It said that the Virgin Mary had a message for believers. She emphasized the importance of prayer and penance. Sister Agnes also had prophetic visions of persecution in the Catholic Church. Along with the visions, a wooden statue of the Virgin Mary began to weep. This phenomenon was even caught on national television in Japan. In addition to the visions, Sister Agnes also witnessed stigmata on the wooden statue. This statue was said to have wept over 100 occasions. The miracle was also witnessed by other nuns at Yuzawadai as well. Of they course. reported that Sister yeah. Agnes also displayed signs of stigmata on her hands and feet. Samples of the tears and blood were collected from the statue. Both were determined to be real human tears and blood. Oh my. The Basilica God of Our damn. Lady of the Angels is considered to be a sacred spot. In 1635, a young girl from Cartoga found a small black statue on a rock near a stream. Thinking it was a doll, she took the item home with her. The next day, the statue went missing from the house. The young girl and her mother looked everywhere for it but couldn't find it anywhere. A few days later, the girl returned to the boulder near the stream and there was the little black carved figure. She took it home once more, but yet again the figure went missing, only to be found on the boulder by the stream. This went on for some weeks before the family contacted a local priest. He told the girl that it was a statue of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. He then placed it safely inside a box inside the church. 
Despite being secured in the church, the statue disappeared again. Oh and my. as before, the statue was found sitting atop the boulder by oh, the stream. This is really riveting stuff. Yeah. This odd series of events was eventually. De it's just going to be a, a series of these things. Okay, sure. Well, everybody. Anticlimactic as it is. Nightcap does have to end at some point. I think we're going to end it there. If we go any further, we're going to have a lot of stuff to get into. <laughs> um, although, I will say, I think I'm going to do another stream tomorrow night. I think we're going to be watching some old uh, shows that I like. I'm going to watch a couple of shows tomorrow night. So I'm going to get high and just fucking roll. We're going to get high on edibles and roll through some Night Stalker. Cole Shack the Night Stalker. So if you want to figure that out, come back tomorrow. We'll do that. Also, if you want to see the replays of these episodes, go check out Zoobox. Check out the About page. Check out where we are, what we do. All awful, all the time. Anybody... I gotta go. I gotta go. I think I've had too much to drink. Goodbye.